Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of Hey Man, I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. You alright? You seem a little uh, seem a little tired or low energy right now. I am. Yeah? Yeah, I... Got enough energy to go see Gaga tonight though? Yeah, I'll, I'll rally. Just another... I think I figured out the stomach thing and today was like... Bad? Yo, dude, I, I couldn't even go to the DMV. Oh yeah, you were supposed to go to the DMV today. Yeah, I couldn't go to the DMV, I couldn't go to the gym. You know if it's keeping me out of the gym. It's bad. Yeah, I don't. I I here's all I can think it is, because I go days and days and it's fine, and I don't change anything. Right. Except the amount of electrolytes that I'm drinking, and I think I know that has a bunch of potassium and and magnesium in it. So you're probably drinking too much. Yeah, because both a, a lot of magnesium will make you poop, and also you shouldn't be drinking too much potassium because you can OD on potassium. It's not, it's not, I'm not like, I'm just saying that yeah, out loud mainline. because like if, if it's already causing you to shit yourself, the next step I think is that, but I don't I, know what that I, means. I, I, here's what is interesting to me too. We have now spent enough time together. Like I'm like, oh, I'll just come in and, and right away you're just like, you seem different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well also, yeah. The old man sweater. Yeah. The old man sweater, that's your, that's like a comfort thing. That's where yeah, I know right. you don't feel you're good. <laughs> so you want to be wrapped up in like a security blanket type shit. So you picked your softest All Saints cardigan out of the back of your closet. And you're like, I'm feeling a little cold yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, if I put these glasses on with that. Hey, look, it's Dan Wolf. Whoa. <laughs> what about these? Though? What about these? I like those. Are you wearing those new Gucci shades tonight? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. You have, no, not. No, that's the whole reason we. you bought them. I got to figure out how not to shit myself at Gagago, though. We're going to see Lady Gaga tonight. Me and Beth and our friends Brooke and Hillary. You just have to get high. It's the only thing that'll calm your stomach down enough. Yeah, I think you're right. Just enough edible to last you through the entire show. That's what you need. I got to get some on the way home then. I'll go get some on the way home. You don't have any. Oh, did you already eat all those? The ones that you left in my guitar bag? No, those are for you, though. Yeah. Oh, I ate those. Oh, hilarious. Did you the, actually? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. The ones that we bought in Harris, Michigan? No, no. I, oh, no. Wait. What other ones? Remember that? There was like two weekends ago. You, you were like, oh, yeah, I went to this. I went to the dispensary, that Nevada State one, the one that's on St. Rose. Yeah. And you said you just grabbed like you had a whole bag of edibles just yeah. in here. They're mm -hmm. gone? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You, wh where's, where's ABX? Where are, uh, you, where are your ABX things? I, I'll call them. Okay. I'll call them. You know, I don't. You, man, you know. I I just no I'm not even just to reach out just because you can I'm just yeah. saying mainly to reach out just because like and they're my favorite animals <clears throat> well right that's the thing is like it's I think it works out but for if, everybody but it, also if I reach out he's gonna feel obligated to he's gonna think I'm reaching out to get free like I never want people to feel obligated to send me free shit that's why you should offer money first be like hey if I wanted to grab yeah. some of these can I send you some money yeah. and then whatever he says after is his choice you know what you know what's interesting is that I I also am a guy and I know a lot of people are don't but if you offer me something free I'm, I'm probably just gonna take it whether I need it or not I'm, I'm gonna be like yeah I'll take that yeah 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 I feel that I understand you know? that yeah I, I, it makes sense because, like, I don't know. Look, the best stuff is free. Uh, I, I'm, I, I remember being there was like this gear. I forget what it was, but it was close to Affliction, No Fear gear, and they were giving it away on Chelsea. Somebody came in, and I just couldn't say no, even though I was like, I'm never wearing this T-shirt. No. But there's something in me where if it's free, I'm like, I'll take it. Well, I feel like also I feel bad saying no to someone that they're offering me something that's worth more than they're giving it to me for. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm with it. So like, even if the thing is five bucks, they're like, yeah, you can have it for free. I'm like, that's, are you sure? Like, yeah. there are sometimes I don't second guess it. Like when I, like if, when I was just a uh, Rubio's, that taco place here yeah. is like me and my girlfriend Iman's favorite. And so whenever I go in, I don't ever order a drink when I do the online pickup. Because I don't want them to fill the drink up for me because I like to fill my fountain drinks up a specific way. You do? What yes. specific way? Uh, depending on the size of the cup, generally it's all the same. I usually go like, I like to have like 50% ice, if not a little lower. Yeah. Just because I don't want it to be too watered down. But when they go like, you know, you know, when you go to places that fill up drinks, they put so much ice on it. So they use less fluid. Yeah. So I don't like that. You know, it's crazy. I'm the opposite. 
You're going, you're, you're full ice. Yeah, you know, I am a full ice. You're getting less drink. I know, but I like the way it tastes more. That you like it more watered down. I'll, well. Yeah, and if I need to, I'll just put more ice in it and put more drink in it later. You mean a drive through? It's tough to do. Yeah, the drive, the hundred percent. Or like, like, but well, dude, like when I go out to a bar, like if you get a mixed drink, the amount of ice they put in it to make it look like it's a huge drink is is a lot. Like, so that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, I like I like cold though. Cold is more important. The to drink me. already comes out cold. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. I mean, can I and tell also, you? The amount of ice doesn't change how cold it's gonna be. Like if you go from half. Well, Did you say the amount of ice doesn't me, change me, how me, cold it's going to be? Let me rephrase that. If I had a half cup of ice yeah. and you had a full cup of ice yeah. and we both put the same liquid in there, it's going to be the same cold. Disagree. I think it would be a disagree if you put like two ice cubes in one and then 12 no, in another. You're, That's the, Science! You're 100% wrong. Explain the science behind it then. More cold, less hot. More cold, less hot. There's more ice. The ice is colder than the fluid. It More stays cold, cold, less hot. It stays cold longer. It doesn't get colder. I incorrect. Because the more non-ice you have, the water will melt the ice. Right. The fluid will melt the ice. As Correct. opposed to it being ice. Correct. Ice colder than fluid. More ice, more cold, less hot. Right, but more ice... When you have more liquid in there, you melt the cold and get more warm. So, if anything, your your drink's going to be warmer faster by that by that reasoning you just had. No, no, that's not. Listen, if that's what they taught you at LSU, I'm glad we pulled you out of there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Dude, it's why I walked out. It's why I walked. It's not math, but math and science are correlated. It's yeah, why I walked out of a. It's why I walked out of a math in the term. Yeah, well, let me ask you a question. Okay. And I'm going to give you... I just, bet you got so scary sitting up like that. Because I bet you you can tell... Oh, man, I'm going to sit back down. <laughs> Too I much energy. You, by the way, do you like this, DJ? Can't even read... It's just, let's say... Gorditas always snuggle better. Is that what that says? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So... Okay, that wasn't the reaction I thought I'd get from you. Uh, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> uh, do you know what my two biggest restaurant pet peeves are? I bet you you could... I bet you you could name one of them. Restaurant? I have so many restaurant pet Can peeves. Can you name mine? Crazy. Because you probably hear mine every time we sit down. Uh, the wet table. <sighs> wet table is one of mine too. Like, look, Guys, and, and again, here's the thing. If you're wiping down the table when I go to sit down, that, look, great. That's no. fine. No, no, no. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. If you're wiping down the table with a sandy rag, I get it. I appreciate it. Thank you. However, on top of that, wipe it again down with a dry cloth or napkin. Every time I sit down at a table, I know it's sanitizer, but I also don't know that it's sanitizer. Like I don't, I don't like putting my hands down on top of a Dude, wet table. It's not sanitizer. They are grabbing that rag out of the dirty fucking pail of water that they have behind the counter. They take it out, they they run it, and then they wipe your fucking table down. And then you put your forearm on that dirty ass, musty fucking water. Well, the reason I think it's uh, not water is because uh, when I worked, when I worked at the counter, when I like you know the the restaurant yeah. I worked at, the bucket wasn't water; it was sanitizer, a hundred percent. We had machines in the bag that were specifically filled up to fill up specific buckets to wipe down tables. It is a hundred percent sanitizer. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent sanitizer. That's why I can't get mad. I'm, I'm already just, mad. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just frustrated because I don't like touching a wet table. Nah, dude, it's because, gross. And when your menu sticks to the table, yeah, because look, my brain does uh, know that it's sanitizer, but at the same doesn't. time, my brain is like, I don't know what that is. I've worked so in I, too many restaurants. I've seen too many gross things. Yep. I don't want to touch anything wet in your fucking restaurant because I know all of you had the same attitude that I had when I worked there, which is this is just fuck a job. this job. This is yeah, a job. yeah. This is a fucking job. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Right. It, it, Second one, yo, dude. Wait, 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 wait. I want to try. I want to okay. try to figure it out. Okay. I'm trying to think. Your my restaurant pet peeves and yours, I don't think are the same. Does it have anything to do with the server? No, no. Mm. Right. Listen, dude, there are two things I drink at a restaurant. Water and iced tea. Yep. When you bring me an iced tea that isn't packed with ice, I'm I'm upset. But when I but when I've They're trying to give you more drink. But yeah, but it's a free refill. I don't need more drink. How do you know? Iced tea's free refill, dude. Everywhere? Everywhere. How do you know? I've never been somewhere where iced tea was not free refill. So I don't know everywhere. I know everywhere I've ever been in my life. I don't order iced tea, so I don't know the answer to that. Let me just tell you this. 
when I finish my iced tea, if you fill up my cup out of that warm ass tea pitcher that doesn't have any ice in it, and I don't have iced tea, I have war- room temperature warm tea, I am upset. You look so short in that camera, by the way. Oh, I'm slouching. Yeah, I know. I know you look you look tiny. Do you want do me you, to sit up? No, do you want me to match you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Like that. <laughs> Yo, dude, those are my two biggest ones. I want iced tea. I want it iced, iced tea. And I don't want the table. I don't want the table to be wet. Yeah, I think there was once ice in those uh those iced tea things, but I don't think there always is ice in those Fine. iced tea things. Now, but then why why are you giving me now warm watered down tea? You like watered down tea, so I mean I don't like watered down tea. You, I I said earlier when you said you pack a little ice now, I go you like it watered down, and you go yeah, but if I need to, I'll just add more things. So, no, 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 no. I don't you like it. stuff now. I you can't get that angry. I don't. <laughs> I don't like it watered down. I do not like my drinks watered. You down. You better not. What do you? What are your restaurant pet peeves? Uh, this is gonna sound really. Uh, this is gonna sound really assholey and douchebaggy. Oh really? Yes, yes, yes. And it's gonna. That's not your mo. No, it's not. And I don't mean it to sound that way. I just hate when I go to a restaurant and I know I can do my service job better than them. Oh, yeah, that does sound a little douchey. It sounds douchey. <laughs> it sounds douchey. But, like, for me, like, I, like, because well, when I worked in a restaurant, <laughs> yeah, I, I had certain standards as, yeah. as a worker there. Yeah, yeah. And there were certain things that I specifically did for, you know, to just, whether it was to make extra tips, to make good impressions, whatever it was. And so, I don't know. I, I also hate like like the big one for me is like when your server doesn't come check on you. You see them three times in the meal. One where they come to take your order. One when they come to drop your food off. And one when they come to get your bill. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that either. Yeah. And I get look. I get it's a busy night, and I get all those things taken you know taken into consideration because we've been in that position, and you and I have worked in restaurants, and so I totally understand it. It's just a pet peeve. Right? Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm but with yeah, you. that that first statement saying that like that's truly how I feel. Like I see somebody moving around a restaurant, and I'm like, dude what's going on over here? Yeah. Like, but again, that's just, that's just me being a fucking critic. And, and that's, that's one of the asshole things to me where it's like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate going in there and just saying like, I could run this restaurant. Like, why is it that this is happening and this is happening and that's happening? I will tell you, dude, I loved working in restaurants. Me too. Dude, that Jersey Mike's job, you know, that Jersey Mike's job for me I, was I, arguably I, top. I have, I have three favorite jobs of all time. Right now, the job we're doing is my favorite. Yeah. Second one is the Josh Wolf show. Yeah. And the third one is Jersey Mike's. For sure. 100%. Yeah, there's something about working in a restaurant where you where it feels like you're on a team, which we both like. I'll tell you something else, dude. Every restaurant I ever worked in, everybody everybody was fucking everybody. Oh, not at the restaurants I worked at. Well, you worked at Jersey Mike's. I feel like that would be the restaurant where everyone is fucking everyone. No, well, there's no booze and nobody's going out and drinking after work. And it's cap. We went out drinking after work. Did you call me cap. I said cap, like cap, like captain. No, no, like cap. That's a lot. Like you said, no one. You guys don't go drinking out. No, go out drinking after work. I, I just cap. feel like the Jersey Mike crew isn't the same as the crew that's going out. But it could be a hundred percent. I would a hundred percent agree with that. Your Jersey Mike's crew is not the same as your typical bar crew. Yeah, a hundred percent. But a lot, a lot of they, always a lot of fun. Very volatile. A mm-hmm. lot of drama. Which was always fun to watch because I from was afar. Ne- I yeah. never really got involved in it, but I loved stirring the pot. I like other people's drama. That's I think. Like, yeah, it's why I can't watch reality TV because I know how much I like other people's drama. Yeah, and I know I'll just get sucked into it, so I stay away from it. Also, because I worked on it, and I'm just like, eh. I'm gonna say something right now that's gonna be, I'm sure, controversial, but I I I don't mind watching objectively the housewives be train wrecks. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, and I've watched some with your mom, if I'm being honest. And and to me, the train wreck part. But but I, uh until people like I don't want to reward Andy Cohen. I'm gonna come on. I'm gonna go straight <laughs> up and tell you right now. I think he's done more damage or as much damage to American society as any entertainer has ever done. I think he shows toxic women drinking. If they feed them booze, they pit them against each other. He casts train wrecks. 100%. But it is a it is a terrible snapshot, and it's unfortunate that it becomes aspirational for other women. Yeah. And I think he gives one fuck about them, and I think he gives zero fucks about us or how it has about 
And I think he, I think he's a pretend good guy. I think those reunion shows he gets where he gets them yelling at each other and shit is just fucking the, the, the lowest level form of entertainment. And he pushes it on you like a fucking drug dealer. Yeah. Cause he's and exploiting he, people. He is exploiting people and it's time for it to fucking stop. I think he, people, I, I hear him talking about, or people talking about him being a good guy, but if he, he's still cashing checks and still giving zero fucks and still putting those people like the, the Utah women out there, like I, yo, you'll never convince me that he's a good dude. I, 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 I don't know him personally, but I think, so I don't know if he's good to his friends and his family. I'm sure he is. I think his value system is fucked. How yeah. About that? Just, just a moral compass period. I think what he's doing, he knows now. When he first started, he didn't know, but he knows now. He knows now what yeah, how people see it. And, definitely. And 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 um how it's viewed, and I think how it's digested by people, that type of entertainment. Right. And I I, I just I think with all that shit, I think he he just it doesn't it, do as anything long good. As he, nah, as long as he I would love for him to be honest about it. Be like, yeah, dude, I actually don't give a fuck. No, uh, you know these women get to make their own choice, and they get to come on and train wreck themselves to death. Hundred percent, and I get that. That is all true, all true. But, but I you think can't it's act, true. You can't act like you're not exploiting these women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and doing damage to people who are watching. Yeah, because it's almost like giving them a false pretense of like what. Because the housewives are depicted, and help me because I don't really watch the housewives. Yeah. But are the housewives depicted of having like this, like, like? Not pristine life, but like movie life, almost like they're depicted of not like just rich. No, they're definitely depicted as train wrecks, and the, and that they all have problems. But it's you all, know what I would love to see, dude. But it's, it's almost glorifying it, becoming. It, it, dude, it's scripted. It's scripted TV. It's well, just yeah. unscripted. I would love to see a reality show. It, you know, dude, your mom pitched a reality show with some. With it, this is how a hey, women. This is how little faith network execs have in you. Beth pitched a reality show in um, Nashville. She had these very successful women in Nashville, some wives of country singers, some mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, yep. just successful, multicultural, and none of them were train wrecks. No. Okay. But the idea of the show was, let's give you the real lives, some of them going through cancer, some divorce, some career changes, some problems with their kids, and show people not some they drink sometimes, they don't drink all the time. Show women supporting each other and how they get through real issues of their real life. Yep. And not one network exec wanted to show a show and did not think that anyone would watch a show where people were dealing with real problems in their real lives and real women supporting other real women. That's fucked up. Yeah. And, yo, dude, if you would pitch that show, and we did, he, she did pitch it to a couple networks that were like, yeah, we want that. And as soon as they got into development, they were like, yeah, but can we force drinks on them? And that's Andy Cohen. Can, yeah. can we force, can we make them look How like fucking train wrecks instead of grown people who are growing? Yo, dude. How you want drama? How much more dramatic is life and death? How much more dramatic is birth or or troubles with childbirth or are problems getting pregnant? Y you got to see this petty ass, right? And so it's 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 a bummer. I don't know how we got off on this, but it's, it's a bummer. Well, you got off on Andy Cohen. Well, not got off on Andy Cohen, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And by <laughs> the way, I've met Andy, and uh, was very nice and kind and and um. But, but on this, on this, and I like his, I really do. I'll watch that. Watch what's happening live. Yeah. Um, cause he seems like an entertaining dude. Absolutely. But I think his moral compass is off and he has enough money in the bank and he should probably put these fucking shows to rest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, look for him. It's, or for other people for the reason they didn't take mom shows. Cause it's quote, not good TV. It's not entertaining to see something that's not a cat fight. That's why if you see like, like that, like, those show like Baddie South and like all that stuff. It's like, oh Yo, my dude, god! And, Can we? and 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 it makes people aspire to being on these fucking train wreck shows yeah. where they're just gonna have to be exploit themselves and be painted in pictures 
that they don't want to be painted in, man. Yeah. I bet you if you asked most, most reality people after the show, did you have a good time? Was that worth it? I bet you a lot of them would be like, yeah, it was... The, the backlash has been fucking terrible. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. Look at the... That perfect match show that I worked on. Yeah. So I, I had talked to, I still talked to one of the dudes that was on that show. And even in the middle of it, he, I remember him looking at me and going, bro, I didn't even know what I signed up for. And after he was like, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't do that again. I just, I can't. It's, it, it was it worth it for exposure for me. Yes. A hundred percent. But was all of that worth it? Because then online for a couple episodes, he was the bad guy. And then for the rest of the show, he was the good guy. Because people saw it play out the way it was supposed to play out. But it's like... You're at the mercy of those producers. And, yeah, 100%. Because uh, a lot of... But also a lot of reality stars like to do something that we call blame it on the edit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh, that wasn't actually who I was. They edited That me. is a lot of that, though. 100% it is. But also at the same time, those people that they're editing are already that person. And, They're just making it blown up yes. more so that everybody and, can see it in, tr in what they would call like a spotlight, right? And, like, And let me just say, guys, it's not that I'm anti-train wreck. I I love other people's drama. Yeah, I, dude, I'm in for I, it. I'm in for a train wreck every now and then. But balance it out. Yeah, 100%. You can't just uh, constantly be exploiting people's desire to be famous. Yeah and making them look like shit people. And then you get to the fucking finale and pretend like you're just, you know, yeah. I'm just a observer. No, dude, yeah. you push no, the drinks. You're, yeah, you're, you push the storyline. Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah uh, reality, it's such, a, it's such a weird line in reality TV of, of, of wanting to, like, especially for the, the talent on there, wanting to make the producers and everybody happy and like you so you can keep a career in this in the town you know what i'm saying and like continue to get called for other things yeah but dude or make the moral choice like when i talked to this dude on perfect match i, I remember talking to him i was like dude they're going to make you they're going to make you make the tv choice not the right choice yeah but you have to know that them making you make the tv choice doesn't define who you are as a person but some people in that in that world start to make like their right, what they think is their right choice already is that TV choice. And it's like being in that world with the producers and all that pressure and the cameras, it almost, it literally flips people into just straight reality stars to where functioning in real life is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it. No. I, 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 and maybe it is me, old me shaking my fist and get off the lawn. You. But I, 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 I'm done with the, 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 the no positive vibes. Yeah. I'm done. I, I just, the reality let's show make a positive, stuff. Let's, like, let's make a positive vibes reality show then. Yeah, man. But apparently nobody wants to see it. No network wants to put it on anyways. Well, you know? I mean. And, and look, dude, the truth of the matter is we're, we, we're not attracted to it. We're attracted to the train wreck. We're not yeah. attracted to good news. Yo, dude, you know what piss, pushes the needle, which is why politicians do it? Fear. Mm. Not a... Yep. What's good out there right now is not what pushes the needle. True. What you're scared of losing, what the boogeyman who's coming to get you. Yeah. That's what pushes the needle. And so, and by, by the way, dude, I'll, I'll tell you, man, like I, I you know, I, I turned down a reality show for me, you, your mom and Caitlin. I know you told me that. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, not interested. I don't know too many marriages and kids that ended up, on the better after the reality show. Do you know what I mean? Look, the Osmores maybe are better now, but the the two kids definitely went through some shit. And I don't know about the 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 Osborne that didn't get filmed. I don't know if she has any of the right issues that the other two well, had. I mean, I'm I can't say the Kardashians got better, but they did get a lot of money. Yeah, man, but you couldn't pay me to live that life. You couldn't pay me to live that life. If you're paying me as much as they give, nah, as much nah, money nah, they nah, have, nah, you nah, can nah. pay me. There, there's a, there's a certain level you can't pay me. No, no, no. Because I, there is a certain amount of money I would sell out for, and mm -hmm. that is up there with with it for sure. Kardashian money, I'm selling out. 100%. No, I, I don't. No, no. You and this is recent for me, and we're not rich, we're not poor. No. Um, but this level and happy is so fucking great. Yeah. Absolutely. Where I am and happy, I can go to a grocery store 
I haven't done a bunch of shit that I know I would regret or that aren't in my morals right. for money. Right. I I still have a good relationship with everybody in my family. I haven't sold my soul for, you know, and damaged any relationships with people that I love. Yep. All that stuff, man. Way more important. And and um, look at the Kardashians have a ton of dough, but you're never gonna convince me that Chris Jenner's a good person either. Oh, I love her family, dude. Bro, probably, probably loves her family. Loves bro. her family, but look, I, I've said loves this. I've said this to you before, and I've said it before, and all, a lot of other places. Look, the devil works hard. God damn it, Chris Jenner works harder. That woman is, dude. But she sold her daughter's sex tape. I, but I, but would you really call that love for your daughter? No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm. That's this also what the, I'm trying to say. This is what I'm telling you. If if I, uh, that is so, so far beyond that that people have just forgotten that she sold her daughter's sex tape, and that some that somehow she just walks among us like a fucking normal human. And it's all and also like people. It's funny because like if you're a Kardashian fan, you. I mean, not only if you're a Kardashian fan do you idolize that family, but you really idolize Kris Jenner. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of people who love that family like love her especially. I will say that she I, does make me laugh though. I'm not gonna lie. I have grown <laughs> to like um, Kim because, and I don't actually. I don't dislike any of those young ladies. I really don't. There's nothing to do. No, and they work hard, and they. Apparently, they must have good business acumen. I mean, they've figured some shit out, right? They, I, I, but I wouldn't want to live that life. I don't have anything against any of them, right? Yeah. And I, and they've all worked really hard. And the two young Jenners are gazillionaires, and all, one's a billionaire. And yep, and uh, Kylie. yeah, man. But the the mom, you know, whatever. Yep. I'm with you. I, I would not have done to. I would not have sacrificed that part of my relationship with any of you to make us that rich. No, and I'm okay with that. I, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm glad that we didn't have a reality show because life would, we probably wouldn't be sitting here right now had we had that reality show. Yeah, dude, who knows what happens with me and your mom? Like they, they or have to, with, they have with, to make arguments. Who knows what happens with, or with any of us? Anything period yeah, in a reality dude. show. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, I, but, uh, all right, everybody. Back to the but fun. if anybody wants to uh, pay me that amount of money to sell out, let me know. I'm in for it. Yeah, you look extra short. Uh, you you wanted me to be on your level, so I feel taller than you now. Eh, that doesn't work. <laughs> Just uh, stand up. What do you got for me today? Um. Well, you know, we do the little like that little science facts, but I decided to do some sort of like I, I mixed it up, so I got some human facts, but yeah. I also got some, uh, some some uh, animal facts. Um, but before we get into it, because this isn't going to mean anything to you, it was a you know how I'm a big Newcastle United fan, right? Yeah. Okay. And today we uh, we played the first Champions League game in 20 years at St James Park in Newcastle. So excited, and we're about to beat Paris Saint Germain. And I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know what you need to know, know about that, but how are the fucking lads? That's it. All I got to say. Um, I, can I tell you, you started out by saying, I know you're not a football fan or however you started out. And then I just tuned out. Yeah. I, I didn't hear. That's I, fine. Yeah, That's yeah, fine. Y'all heard it. Yeah. How are the lads? Um, uh, Howie the lads? Howie the lads. I don't know why they say it, but that's. I think it's like. Howie? Like, like, yeah. H-O-W-A-Y. Like my way or the highway? Yeah, but with an O. Howie, yeah, but Howie, like H O W, how Howie, yeah. Howie the lads, how a, H O W A Y. So that's how a, how a. There's a W in there. Yeah, how a. That's what I'm saying. That's what I just said. How way the lads? What does that mean? How a? It's like it's like come on. That's like how like like how are the lads? Like come on, lads. Like the players, the teams. The, yeah, you know. I will say I I do enjoy the word lads that they. Yeah, absolutely. I wish we could do some lads over here. Yeah, you can't. We can't do lads. You know what else? I don't think Americans put, can pull off is saying cheers. Yeah, some do say it though. I get it. I hear it most from bartenders. I think is what I hear it from. Yeah, I. You know, I there was a friend of mine named Michael Morris, and Michael and I used to, you know, Michael's British. Right. And um he would say cheers. And I was like, I can't say it. And we every I time we would, every it. time we would get together, 
I would practice. Like I would try to slip it into conversation and I'd be like, any better? Cheers. And he'd be like, nah. You have to use it in the correct term. I would. I would. But I, and I, I would have him say later, dude. And I was like, that doesn't sound good coming uh-uh. out of you. Uh-uh. No. Nope. La- la- do it later, dude, with a British accent. Later, dude. Mm. Ah. La- later, dude. No? That wasn't bad. Okay. Yeah, like, like, a, like, a, like, like, later, dude. That was Australian. Mm. Later, dude. Later, dude. Later, dude. Later, dude. Well, that's not bad. Later, dude. You know, the trick to the British accent is not to open your mouth. Later, dude. Later, dude. Well, I bet you also the sounds come out because their teeth are all different angles. So <laughs> probably the sound <laughs> comes out think, different, probably. I think they keep their mouth shut a little more than we do. And I think they talk like this a little more than we do. That's maybe the best English accent I've ever done. Yeah. It's better when you say Peaky Blinders. Peaky fucking blinders. <laughs> but By again, way, when did you shut. put your glasses on? Uh, I feel better. <laughs> When but, I don't feel well, I put my sunglasses on a lot. I know. I know. Guys, when I'm sick in bed, I'm wearing sunglasses. Are you actually? Yeah, I don't like the light. Just cover your face. You have a snore. Do you have a snore mask? I, I'm in the podcast studio. I want to cover my fucking face. It'd be great if you just did the podcast with your eyes closed for the rest of it. Dude, with, with that <laughs> fucking vise, that vi- you know, that visor with the mirror. I saw somebody like, wearing one of those on our walk today. I was like, are you welding? What's the deal? Yeah, you should just no, you should just sit there and just try and do it with your eyes closed the entire time. Okay, ready? Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> what if I what if I did the English accent with my eyes closed? What are you like the Michael Jordan of accents now? Get it? Because he shot a free throw with his eyes closed? Yeah, but Michael Jordan. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, ooh. <laughs> yeah, he's got no situational awareness, so this is going to be pretty funny. Well, I, 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 okay. I'll just do the rest of the pod like this. Can't wait. All right, hit me. What do you get? What'd you bring in today? Um, I got some. I got some fun facts. I can't tell you how bad I want to throw something at you. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, I, I wanted to throw something at you so bad, or I'm not gonna lie. I was about to get up and just like go over there because you wouldn't be able to hear me with the headphones on. Um, but yeah, so I, I got a weird body fact for you about humans that I, I think, uh, will explain something, uh, about you. Um, really, you know, your, uh, your ears never stop growing. I did know that. I did, but it explains a lot. Oh, are you saying I have big ears? Yeah. It's where I get them from. When I, when I cut my hair yeah. and I don't have the hair to cover it, my ears are like fucking. Let me see your ears. Yeah, but you have tiny little round ears. I have giant flat ears. See, these are flat. It's see, also, but that's what I'm saying. You have you've had a couple years on me, so like, who knows? I'll probably end up like that. Yeah, but like, see how these guys? If you're watching, you can see I have pointy. You all, you don't have a. There's no point on your. You ear. all, hold on, Matt, stand me here for a second. You all have your ears are curved here. They curve around, right? Mine are mine's flat. Right, and it has very little cartilage, so I can bend it around like this, and I can even put it directly when I'm not wearing glasses. You know, I can tuck my ear into my ear, right? Yeah, I do. I can tuck my ear. It, oh, it's too hot. It needs to be colder for it to stick. But That's they, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but they usually will stick in there. But I don't have any. Hmm. Yeah, see, they're kind of big. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yours aren't big. They are when I don't have as much hair. But like, I feel like I feel like my my ears are. Yeah, the large. ears never stop growing, and I, I don't think the nose stops growing either. Oh, I, I didn't see that one. Did you all? Oh, speaking of of, are you saying you think my ears are super big? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, uh, yeah, you know, usually this is how I know we're comfortable with each other. Usually you'd be sitting across from somebody who'd be like, no, I don't think they're big. I'm just saying. But you were like, yeah, dude, yeah, that's that's what I said. That's exactly yeah. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is also just another one about the ear that I also didn't know. Did you know that earwax is actually a type of sweat? What? Yeah. Uh, and there's no explanation to it, but it just says earwax is actually a type of sweat. It comes from inside your ear. You sweat wax? Are you, do you, do you have a lot of earwax? 
Yes. You do? Yes. How often do you have to clean your ears? Uh, I clean them every other day just to be safe. Yeah. But like it's but also like it's harder to get it out sometimes when it's just like dry. So yeah. always after a shower, like because that's when like the steam obviously it kind of like. But you're not supposed out. to Q-tip them. What am I supposed to do? So let it sit there. The, because Q-tip actually jams it in. Well, I don't stick it in. I on the Q-tip, I go I go around. I don't actually stick it straight in. I just I literally just get what's on the. You don't candle it. No, I have. I've wanted to do the candle, but I'm scared to do the candle. I've done the candle. I'm scared to do the candle. Why are you scared it? Because there's hot wax dripping towards my ear. That sounds painful. Yeah, but it's also dripping out of your ear. Out of my ear. The wax. Well, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, the, the the thought of it and watch people do it. Like, I want to do it, but I'd rather just go get a professional ear cleaning. Like, someone just, like, goes into my ear and pulls shit up. What? Yeah, you, you know there's professional ear cleaners. It's a thing. What? That's somebody's job? Yeah. They clean up people's ears. And also, like, you know, remember how mom's uh, brother had that cockroach stuck in his ear once? Yeah, Brett. So, yeah, Brad. So, they have, you know. They, Brett. Brett, sorry. They have, so, you know, they have they have doctors who specialize in ears. Yeah, to, I know there's eyes, ears, nose, and throat dudes, but I didn't know that you could go somewhere and somebody would just clean the earwax out. Yeah, they have professional ear cleaners. When I went to... How Ur long could that take? It can't take very long, but long enough, depending on how jacked up your ear is. You could look up an ear cleaning video. Oh, I'm about to. They're, yeah. They're, but so, when I, I remember one of the times I went to urgent care. She was, you know, how they check your ear and everything at a yeah. doctor's office. She was like, hey, can you... uh?" Can you hear out of your left ear? And no. I was, and I was like, "What?" She goes, "Can you hear?" I go, "Yeah, I can hear fine." She goes, "Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go get somebody real quick." And I was like, "Uh, don't say that. Don't say that. Why did you say that?" And then she just left, and came back with another person, with the longest Q-tip I've ever seen, and pliers, and I pliers, was, or like tweezers. And I was like, "What is happening?" She was like, "You uh, you have some buildup in that left ear." I go, "To find buildup where you need." A six foot fucking Q tip and, and another person. And another person. Like, do you think I'm like a dog and I'm gonna run away from this? No. Like, yeah. what's what's happening? And she was like, okay, just stand still. And she wet the Q tip. Oh no. no put no, the Q tip no. in to like wet whatever she was gonna pull out. And then stuck the tweezers in. Dry. And pulled out. A ball of earwax, I couldn't even begin to explain. She threw it away too fast before. You I didn't keep it? No, I tried to get my phone out to take a photo, but she threw it away too fast. I go, wait, can you pull that back out? She goes, no, it's a biohazard container. And I go, Doc, you gotta let me fucking take a picture How of that. How big? Dude, like the size of my thumbnail. No. Yeah, hold on. Thick? Like a ball, dude. And she was like, can you hear better? I was like, actually, yeah. Yeah, I can hear last week. She was like, yeah, that was a lot. And I was like, ah. Really? And I didn't even notice it. So I, it's probably all in the same shit right now, but like, but yeah, I was like, that is a gross, like why? But then also I was like, I need a picture of it. She goes too late. I go, come on. You gotta let me get a photo yeah. of it. Like right? you can't just do that and not let me get a photo of it. Like, how does that work? Well, you know what she, you know what her response was? She goes, <laughs> she goes, most people don't like taking pictures of things I pull out of their body. And I was like, yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. But most valid, people aren't but, me. Yeah, most people aren't us. Top 10 best ear cleaning in Las Vegas. Let's, dude, I think we should we should make this content. You and I should go get our ears cleaned in Vegas. Okay. Opinions. Is the professional ear cleaning worth it? The first benefit of professional ear cleaning is that it can help prevent hearing loss. Earwax buildup can block sound waves from entering the ear canal and causes temporary or permanent hearing loss. Yeah. Okay. How to get ears professionally cleaned. Uh, no. How? Okay. The safest way to remove wax buildup from your ears, the doctor uses special instruments like a ceramic spoon, forceps, or suction device. Holy shit. Yeah, so they could do it in a bunch of different ways. The spoon is the one that they just, like, they'll like scrape it off the sides of your ears and then just pull it out. And then they'll, like the other one is a suction. So they'll literally just stick something in and just go. Every, they say everybody should go once a year at least, but every six months seems like the right way to do it. I've never done it. So let's go. I'm down. It's not like, I'm in for it. Okay. I'm in for it. How, do you want to do, there's a couple places. Well, I'll probably have to figure it out after you're here in Vegas, but I, but we could reach out. There's a place called, um, 
the hearing associates of anybody got a funny name? Because we should go to them. No. It's the hearing associates of Las Vegas. That's not that's too not funny. funny. All right, we'll look it up. But yeah. I'm saying, like, if we okay. find somebody with a funny name or like a like a, a play on words, we'll go. We'll go to them. I wonder if there are other places in your body you should have professionally cleaned. Well, dudes, like I guess a colonoscopy is like cleaning it out. Yeah, is that just for dudes though? No, no. I don't think so. I I need to get mine. I need them to check my dink dink. I know what you mean, but yeah. it that's not what it sounded like. Because you also did this. Well, this so, is how they'll be checking it. Right, but it, it felt like you were like like you then you said ding ding or dink dink or whatever. Ding dink, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've never I've had did I tell you, dude? I mean, looking back now, I know that I probably was taken advantage of in the doctor's office. Did I ever tell you this story? Nope. Are we about the trauma trauma dump? No, I, I don't consider it trauma because I I have laughed about it many times. That's a comic for you. Okay. <laughs> so I get in a, I get in a car accident in LA when we were driving to Saturn. But that's the one you went to the windshield. No, 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 no. That was in high school. Oh. Oh. The Saturn was what we drove down I, from I remember the I remember the was that the one where I saw you in the hospital? I tried to pull that thing out of your nose? Same trip? No, that was probably when I had uh, meningitis. Oh, oh, that was meningitis, not a car yeah. accident. That's right. So I, uh, I'm driving in LA and I get T-boned. And um, I, my back's a little fucked up. My car is fucked up. To- totaled. And this woman is not being cooperative. And her, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm like, all right. And so my lawyer was like, hey, just go to a doctor. Because if we can get you, if I can talk to her lawyer and be like, hey, we went and saw a doctor. You want to settle this up yeah. for just the car or should we throw a bodily in there? Yeah. Because I just wanted her to fix my fucking car. Yeah, 100%. So I go to the doctor and it's this dude in the valley. And I was a younger guy. And this is how I know, man, when people say why didn't you speak up or why didn't a lot of times when something you're in the moment, you either assume somebody knows more than you or why would I question the doctor? He's a doctor. Or, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm in there and he, they're like, you need a physical to, you need to check your back and all this stuff. I was like, cool. Checks my back. And he's like, we're going to have to get just a couple of x-rays. And I go, okay. And he goes, and then I'm just going to need to check your prostate. And I was like, okay. And I was like, why? He was like, just, you know, just need to, need, need to be thorough. And I was like, okay. And so this dude checks my prostate. Now, by the way, this is the, I've told you about the, the Pilates teacher who cut my nuts, right? Do you say, hold on, cut with a T or cup with a P? Cup. No. Oh, dude. Uh, let me finish. Del- let- Delphine? No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was going to say, I knew she was crazy, we, but like. We, we were, this is when I was working at Chelsea lately. And uh, Colonna, Sarah Colonna, a good friend of mine, she, I was like, hey, I want to try this Pilates. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, she goes, you can go to my, t- my instructor. I'm like, okay. And I was like, I, I can't go to your instructor uh, because I'm going to be taken to the gym next door, but uh, I'm going to take it and I'll tell you how it goes. So like fifth lesson in and I said it. Guy, Sarah, guy or girl teacher? Woman. Okay. I say to Sarah, and this woman was so knowledgeable, dude. Everything I would do, she was like, this is your whatever muscle and attaches to this and this. And like, she was so technical and so knowledgeable. Hmm. I was like, this is the most knowledgeable trainer I've ever had. She knows everything. So, and there was a stretch we would do. Where her hand, one hand would be on my leg pushing it, and the other hand was always kind of cupping. While you're on your back? Yeah, kind of yeah. cupping my nuts. Yep. Not kind of cupping my nuts, cupping my nuts. And um, so I said to Sarah, I said in the office, I go, it's such a great body, full body workout. She goes, yeah. I go, you know what's weird? I go, you know what stretch actually is the best for my hamstring? And she was like, what? I go, that one where, you know, she cups your nuts and you don't have nuts, but you know, she kind of, she probably has her hand over your, your 
vagina. And she was like, what? <laughs> I go, you know, the cup, your nuts. And she was like, show me the, show me, show me, show me. Show and me. I showed it to her. She was like, just so you know, that's not a thing. Nope. And I was like, what? She was like, oh, it might be a good hamstring stretch, but no, the, the, the cup of the nuts is not a thing. She was like, nobody's supposed to cup your nuts. And so I remember I was like, what? She was like, yeah, this is, that's not a, you could go check any Pilates video you want. Zero people cup the nuts. Zero nut cupping. <laughs> so I remember going back to her because I didn't want to, it was such a good workout. <laughs> I just didn't want your nuts was, to be cut. Yeah, I was gonna, I was okay with it when I thought that was, was where part of it. she needed to base her hand. Or, I just don't question people who I think know what they're doing. You should. So I go back to her and we start to get in nut cupping position. <laughs> pause. And I go pa to her. Pause. <laughs> Fucking pause. <laughs> Fucking pause. I'm what? In, I'm in full <laughs> nut cup. <laughs> and I, she puts her one hand on my leg. And the other hand, your nuts <laughs> going, going to cup the nuts. And I go, Hey, she goes, yeah, because I didn't want to lose her as a teacher. I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable because honestly, I didn't take it as sexual and I didn't take it because as they're professional. And you're thinking it's, it's not just that dude. I wasn't in a sexual it, it, there was nothing sexual about what we were doing. Right. And so I really didn't even think twice about it. I was just like, oh, you know, this is, it, it was whatever. It was like, the, right. oh, this is what happens when you train. Sometimes someone cups your nuts or whatever. And so. <laughs> I don't think that's the saying. <laughs> I said to her, yeah, I said to her, I go, hey. She goes, yeah, I want you to know that I really love this workout. She said, thank you. And I said, I think you're incredibly knowledgeable. She said, thank you. And I said, you know, and I love to, I love this stretch. It really, I have really tight hamstrings. She goes, you sure do. I said, but do you have to cut my nuts? She said, I do not. And I said, cool. And that was it. That's hilarious. Was she just like doing it until you said something? No like, idea. That conversation didn't go any further than that, did nope. it? Nope. You didn't go back another time after that, did you? Did I go back and see her? Yeah. Yeah, of course. She was oh. a great instructor. Oh, all right. And it's not like she was tickling my butthole. Do you know what I mean? She Cutting wasn't... the nuts is pretty close to tickling the butthole. I but feel like that's the next step. She had her hand over the entire area, you know? So the hand was... But but there was no, there was no butthole was tickle. It, but was it purpose... What, like, was it meant to be I sexual by her? I or? can't... The way she dismissed it and the way we talked about it so non-sexually... Uh, I, I think no, but, but also but at the same could, time, but, how can Yeah, you because know? she clearly performed the stretch without the nut cup. And Correct. Ju and just as well. And, but also, like, had she offered it, like, massage places have ha offer happy endings, like, it, if it's out on the table for everything, maybe more people will be open to it. You don't have to just secretly cup all these dudes nuts. I don't think that she wants dudes coming to Pilates hoping to get jerked off. She should stop at cupping the gym. She should stop cupping dudes nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, listen, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's my only thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm with you. But she was a great instructor. If she's listening, which she isn't. No, she's not. Because I don't I don't remember her name either. But she was a great instructor. Dude, that was the same place where this I got Chewy a uh, trainer. <laughs> and we would train at the same time before the show. This was on Chelsea lately. And Chew. <laughs> How would Chewy even train? Yo, dude, he would do one rep of one set and then sit on the d bench and be like, I'm tired. Why are you torturing me? Love him. It was amazing. R.I.P. Chewy, dog. The best. Dude. Fucking the love best. him. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how we got on the nut cupping. How did we get to nut cupping? What was I talking about? We were talking about doctor. Well, I talked about earwax and then we... Mm? Prostate. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But I will tell you, dude. I didn't win my um, legal battle. I'm sure the lawyer was like, it, "Why did he get a prostate exam?" And they were like, "Yeah, I don't. Know. We didn't tell him to." <laughs> wait, wait, wait! You you didn't you didn't win that case after she t boned you. I believe we didn't. How is that possible? Um, Unless you were at fault. No, I I got the car fixed. Did you have to pay for it though? No, no, no. Oh, she, oh. she paid for the car. She paid for it. Okay. But I didn't win what I wanted to win for her being an asshole and then me getting molested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't mean to laugh, by the way, everybody. For those of you who got molested, no, that no, is, no, no, that's, but, but that's just, not what we're aiming for. It's I, just I, I, neither one of those things affected me positively or negatively. Which is not to say that it can no, no, negatively no, 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 no. or positively affect anybody else as well. That's just for think, clarification. Yeah, obviously, we don't need to clarify. But for me, like I didn't, I didn't feel violated on either one. The the prostate one, I was. Can I tell you my honest attitude? Sure. Was like, yep, yeah, you got me, you got me, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got me. What am I gonna say? That's not you the f- attitude you should have for a dude willing, or I, for a I dude was, sneakily sticking his finger up your ass. I was just like, yo, <laughs> dude, you got me. You're not gonna get fool me once, not twice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a funny, funny name for him. Not the ham burglar, but maybe like the hemorrhoid burglar. I, I don't, dude. He was the. I don't know what he was. He was Dr. fucking Jellyfinger. <laughs> but he, he, Close. he, and this is the thing also like, I didn't feel threatened. And honestly, it was nice to know that my prostate was healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but at that young, you didn't need to get your prostate checked, right? Yeah, probably I didn't. <laughs> no, not probably. Definitely. Because you don't have to get your prostate checked until you turn like 40, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's sweet. We're talking about colonoscopy. And then we were talking about. Well, we talked about ear, wa- ear cleaning. And then we got to colonoscopy. Right, and right, then right. you said you got molested by a doctor. Yeah, then... I mean, listen, dude. <laughs> I bet you he's still practicing. Uh, yeah, he, this dude. He had a shaky finger then. He's shaking it like this have now. You, have you? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the scars? The scar on my back and the scar on my from the moles. That dude. Yeah. So this dude who removed some moles off my body had a shaky hand, guys. The scars from my mole removal are so big. They there's, legit. There's, whenever somebody sees them, they're like, "What happened?" I thought like, you. Well, I, remember, I remember seeing, like, looking at it now. I'm like, "Did you get fucking stabbed?" Yeah, or that's like, what it looks like. You know what else it looks like? It looks like the top laces on the top of a football are just sitting on your back, like that. That's what it, it looks like. The laces yeah. on a football yeah, are just yeah, yeah. like it looks like they just cut them off and sewed them into your body. He like, didn't do a good job. Nah, now that <laughs> the dude who did this tattoo has yeah, shaky dude, hand either. Fucking, Jesus Christ! It's so funny. He made it so big so he could do it. Yeah, he I, he was like, I can't go any smaller. I go, you mean like the dude who went half as small as you? He goes, yeah, the letters will bleed together. I go, your letters will bleed together. Exactly. But I mean, not looking at it, some of these dudes' letters did actually bleed together. So like it, like oh, that, dude, like look at your like mom's. that, like that N right there. You don't know, but but that's also such a little space. Like that's, that's yeah. so, you put a T and an H in cursive next to each other. It's gonna look like. Can you write in cursive? Yes. I forget how to write some letters though. I forget how to write a Z. A Z, I think, is this. Yeah, it's something weird. But I, not a little Z. I, I can only write a capital Z, but that might be a little Z too. No. Oh. Is capital it? Z. Zinc, zinc, zoo. Right, but wouldn't Z just be a regular Z? Z, 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 Z. I don't know. Uh, you right? Yeah. If But I, the one question I want to ask you, and then one more fact, and then we got to run. I do have another one. The question I want to ask you is, if you could pick one body part, and that was going to keep growing. What is it? Well, actually, no, that would be dangerous. So you don't want your dick to keep growing. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just thought about that. Did you see the face I made at yeah, you when you said you, that? Because you're going to grow out of of a zone where anyone's going to want to have sex with you. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Um, one body part to keep growing. Now, if you said fingers, it's it's just not just one finger. It's like, and it doesn't grow at a crazy pace where. It grows at the pace of the ear, which is a little bit. I don't know. Because, well, then if it's a little bit, then it could be my dick. Yeah, but do you want your dick to grow when you're 90? It's not like I'll be using it when I'm 90, so who cares? Yeah, dude, that's what I mean. It's just be, it's already the balls are getting bigger and a problem. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I Ears are the one that I pick. Ears are the one that you pick? Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's already happening? Yeah. Well, that doesn't count. No, no, no. Meaning like <laughs> when I'm an old dude, what is going to be the least cumbersome for me? And it's either nose or ears. Lips seem like it could be a problem. Nose. Hands. Seems, nose seems like it's going to be cumbersome. Hands seems like an issue. Yeah, because how do you do anything? Feet issue. Ears for me. I, I was going to say legs because if I gradually got taller and by a t- certain time, certain age, you turned a certain height that no one could block me in basketball, then I would be unstoppable. Man, dude, you would be the best 90 year old playing at the YMCA. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess legs. 
because I'm going to be not lame and pick the same thing that already grows. That was a comment about me. Indeed it was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank, thanks for joining us today, Josh Wolf. All right. Hit me with the next fact. All right. This one I also think you're really going to like. On it, on an average, an average human farts enough in one day to fill up a party balloon. I think you could fill up a whole bouquet of them. Oh, dude, I could have my own business. <laughs> Wait, how great of a business would that be? Like, I was like, just but, about to say fart it, balloons. Yeah, so it's like, but it's like a it's prank. Like, or yeah, but it's like one of those like telegrams where you like hire someone to walk up and deliver like a note, but instead they pop a fart balloon or they about, let it go into someone's face. Yeah, or you tell some tell the tell somebody that it's helium, but it's fart, and they suck it in. Hilarious. But I think if like it's like a it's like one of the telegrams where you go to the door and they be like, hey, so here's a cake for your birthday, and they got you some balloons. Jokes on you! And then you just open it and just let it spew in them. So you spew in their face. I think if you can combine fart with helium, because you couldn't do pure fart because it wouldn't float. Correct. But if you did mostly helium, little bit of fart, does that float? Matt, science. You seem smarter than us. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. So Yo, that, yeah, so it would have to it would have to be like great joke. It would have to be like a seventy thirty mix or something like that, Jacob where there's Wolf, more helium than there is. We are one hundred percent helium farting somebody. One hundred percent. Wait, I, well, let's hold on before we go straight to putting our Uncle, farts in their Uncle mouth. Uncle Danny, I see the one that used to fart in your mouth. No, who was that? But let's do it to Dan, anyways. Dan, will, <laughs> Dan will take the joke. He'll take. It. Okay, I say we do it to Dan on Thanksgiving or Scott. Scott Wolf would not. Scott Wolf's a funny one because I know he'll laugh really hard at that. And he'll want, because I don't mind a little prank war. See, you don't because you grew up with the brothers in the prank war. Yeah. I kind of do because I didn't grow up in a prank war. Yeah. I mean, I kind of did with you. Yeah. But never in a spot to where I was like, I'm going to get him back. Well, I mean, I already and know. also not as a grown ass person because I know as a grown ass person, the prank war, the line gets Dude, you, shifted a you little bit. Already filmed me in my towel talking about shitting my pants without me knowing. Yeah, but that's not really a prank. That's just as exactly what happened. I feel like a prank is a setup for something. I didn't prank you. Like you that's didn't get not you, a prank? No, you didn't get a pie in the face. It was just a funny video. That you filming me without me knowing and calling in, knowing I was going to walk in in my towel talking about that I had a blowout and then putting it on social media. I feel like you and I have a different definition of a prank. I feel like a prank has to be something physical. Okay. Like, well, like, so uh, when I get you back, it won't be a prank? Depends on what you do. Is it going to be physical? Probably not. Yeah. You're, I, a mental, you're a mental warfare guy. I already know what I'm going to do. Great. Good luck. Um, it's happening in San Jose. By the way, guys, this weekend, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, starting tomorrow, which is the 5th. Right? Yes, correct. 5th, 6th, 7th. And then Jacob and I are in. San Jose the, the following weekend, 13th, 13th and 14th. 14th. And guys, and then we are in the in Europe and UK. We go to Dublin, Belfast. Is it Belfast next? Yep. Dublin, Belfast, London, Manchester, Glasgow, Oslo, Amsterdam, Stockholm. You you switched Oslo and Amsterdam this year. But you were Amsterdam, right. Oslo? Amsterdam, Oslo. Yes, correct. Amsterdam, Oslo, Stockholm. Stockholm. Guys, oh, it's First of all, just so you know, the tickets in uh, at Mohegan Sun, Connecticut, in December, December. There were, we're already thinking about adding two shows. Whoa. So, guys, tickets are flying at our shows. So, come get you some. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Uh, at Josh Wolf Comedy for all socials. Guys, the comments that you guys leave on this podcast are amazing. It's so cool to hear that we are reaching a lot of you, some of you in the funny spots, some of you in the emotional spots, some of you just in a father and son relationship. It's so cool that you all are, are all spreading the word. Continue to do so if you can for us. This, um, and I, and um, we're going to be doing a um, email podcast coming up. But remember, if you have any questions for us, email us at heymanpod. That's three A's. HeyManPod at gmail.com. HeyManPod at gmail.com. You didn't say no exclamation point. Exclamation point. You well know, for a done. long time, I called it an explanation point. Explanation point? That's yeah, it's, pretty funny. It's not it. No. It's exclaim. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. Okay. 
Um, just, just making sure. It, it, what's your seven? Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram, twitch.tv slash youthful wolf. I have not been streaming very often. Life's just been, you know, kind of bonkers lately. And I've just been really enjoying doing mushrooms and hanging out with my girlfriend. Um, so <laughs> that's been taking up that time for what I've been doing for gaming. Um, but you know, yeah, that's it. Like he said, comedian joshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. UK, Europe. We're so excited. I can't wait. Um, get to see some friends while we're out there too. A good friend of ours named Jake. Not me. Different Jake. Uh, but we're super excited. So I think that's it for us. Questions coming up on the next pod. No, no, no. Next pod's live. And then the week game. We're going to oh, pre-tape well, a couple uh, when we're in Europe. As a matter of fact, I forgot to bring a change of clothes. So for one of the upcoming podcasts, you're going to see me in the same exact shit. That's true. I'll probably point it out somewhere at the beginning. Oh, me too. Yeah. All right, everybody. We love you. Wait. Do someone nice for someone today. Do someone, someone nice. Do, do something nice or do someone nice. Yeah, either what you know, pick or choose. Do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love. Them. Later, and, guys. And if anybody's looking for a doctor, I know one in the valley that'll see you right away. Big time. Later. <laughs>